I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mr. Worcester Barth. Absent. Ms. McGuire? Absent. Mr. Gajewski? Here. Mr. Benkowski? Here. Ms. Grasco? Here. Mr. Weed? Here. Mr. Byer? Here. Okay. Uh, then the uh, next item is agenda additions. Anybody have anything they wish to add to our agenda as presented? Any additions? Okay. Hearing none. Um, we will uh, go on to uh, public comment. First public comment, four minutes to speak. Is there anybody that, uh, any cards? First of all. We do not have any cards. No cards, okay. All right, uh, then we move on to the consent agenda. Um, first item on that is the uh, minutes from the January 11th meeting. Uh, is there anyone that has a concern or correction on the minutes? Once again, hearing none, uh, we'll move on to the financial report, payment of bills to the tune of $44,881.45. Anything there? Okay. <laughs> All right, then uh, the three-part consent agenda. I need a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Support. Okay, the motion's made by Mr. Weed with support from Mr. Binkowski that we do adopt the three-part consent agenda as presented. Roll call, please. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Crasco, yes. Mr. Binkowski? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay, uh, next we move to Superintendent Stalker's report. He has one informational item. Um, regarding Sting and our participation in SANE. And we also have an informational item, I believe, from uh, <coughs> Ann. There we go. Uh, regarding the Van Etten Lake Special Assessment. Uh, is there anybody that has any uh, question about either of those two? One uh, regarding Sting and the uh, one from the Community Development Coordinator regarding Van Etten Lake Special Assessment District. Is there anything that either Bob or Ann would care to add to their? Well, no? Actually, mine is a, not a consent informational, it's a regular informational. Yeah, okay. Oh, so oh. you do want to deal with it. So it, it's yeah. just not, yeah, I just read okay. it. That's All right. It. It's not a consent. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, then, uh, Bob, uh, you have, I think, three or four or five uh, action items, and the first one deals with the uh, financing of our new uh, building generator. Correct. Um, we had pre previously pursued funding through USDA uh, Rural Housing, uh, to cover part of the cost of purchasing uh, and installing a new generator at the Township Hall. That's now been accomplished, um, and we are in the process of seeking reimbursement for $13,000. We may actually have the money in hand. Hopefully we'll get it soon, because if we get it within 60 days of year-end, then we can count it against the 2015 financial statements uh, as we budgeted. But when the request was made for reimbursement, our grant program uh, representative indicated that execution of a grant oh, yeah. agreement would be necessary. Um, as probably everybody would recognize, that requirement normally comes on a little earlier in the process. <laughs> um, but nonetheless, um, we find ourselves in a position where the request has been made and we're seeking the, uh, the uh, reimbursement. Uh, therefore, I am seeking approval for the supervisor and clerk to execute the grant agreement as it was presented to us. Okay. 
So the generator is a $25,000 item. The grant is for 13. We paid 12. If anybody in the audience, TV or otherwise, wishes to take a peek at this, this generator is in place and working, hooked up, and it's very close to the entrance to the police department on the back side of the township hall. Kind of a white colored, uh, so. how do you pronounce that? Generac? Generac. Yeah. I make a motion to authorize Township Supervisor and Township Clerk to execute the grant agreement that is presented. Okay. Support. All right. Motion by Mr. Weed with support from uh, Ms. Carrasco. Roll call. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Finkowski? Yes. Mr. Fire? Yes. Item two, uh, septic dehydrator and uh, blower motor uh, uh, attempts to get some money out of this, sell these items. Yes, um, and in the case of the blower motors, we did not receive a proposal yet, so the discussion this evening would be focused on the dehydrator. Uh, that piece of equipment was purchased many years ago to uh, service the decommissioned wastewater treatment plant, septage hauling station. Uh, we, we had ceased operations and it became surplus and we have talked in the past about the need to dispose of the equipment while there was still some value. Uh, staff has been actively soliciting interest and, and in that uh, vein I should give credit to Mr. Bill Hamlin who uh, has uh, reached out to num numerous vendors and uh, uh, pursued it with some vigor. Um, the equipment's located at the McNichol Street site. Um, we had hoped we would have a second proposal that's why uh, the one before you is a little stale, if you will. We did not get one, uh, but that's why it wasn't presented at the last meeting. Um, we've also uh, discussed selling it uh, in the not-so-distant past, and I attached some correspondence. Uh, at one time, we were asking $100,000 for the equipment, and the prospective buyer had located a piece of equipment, I believe, in 2010, similar to ours, uh, at a cost then of $54,000. So um, that's intended, I guess, to give you some perspective on what the value yeah. might be here. Um, the efforts uh, of staff ultimately resulted in a proposal from PW Tech, uh, which, as I understand, it's the company we originally got the equipment from, to buy the dehydrator for $23,000. They would pick the equipment up in Oscoda. They acknowledge that the equipment's not warranted and they've also identified the things they need to do to it to make it serviceable. And then as my report was being written, um, they contacted uh, Bill and indicated that if we could make it available by this Friday, they would be willing to increase the price to $28,000. And the proposal on the board table uh, formalizes that particular concept. They've got a, a prospective use for the equipment's our understanding. Um, we could uh, explore other avenues to sell the equipment, but given the history of our sales effort and what appears to be very uh, limited market appeal, uh, it appears that serious consideration should be given to taking the uh, proverbial bird in hand, which would be the $28,000 offer that we find ourselves with. So I am presenting that for the board's consideration, and again, if, if we want to avail ourselves of it, they would be picking the equipment up uh, this Friday, as soon as this Friday. And the prospective uh, buyer is from Maryland, right? Correct. And they're going to come to northern Michigan, pick that up themselves. Wow. Pretty good deal. How long is it again? You said, has it been since our first ad attempt to market this? I believe that was 2010 when we had those initial discussions. So this equipment, both the blowers and the dehydrator, have just been sitting there for, and Mr. Hamlin took it upon himself to market them. Okay. Proactively, yes. Yes. Well, I think the board thanks him for that. You know, so. Okay. Uh, I need a motion to go ahead with this sale. I'll move we go ahead with the sale. Support. Support. All right, a motion by Mr. Binkowski with support from Mr. Weed that we do go ahead with the sale of the, the hydrator. And we're going to continue.
finding ways to market the blowers? We are. Yes. We're still hopeful, actually, to get a proposal. Okay. All right. Okay. And the price will be $28,000. You will notify them tomorrow morning. We would need to execute the proposal, so we would, yeah, send that to them. Okay. All right. Roll call. Mr. Benkowski? Yes. Mr. Wheat? Yes. Mr. Bayeski? Yes. Ms. Crasco? Yes. Mr. Fire? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, item three, action item, uh, wastewater improvement uh, project uh, and a uh, progress payment on that. Yes, this is the third. Um, I've attached the certification from the engineer uh, approving uh, the requested payment and the scope of work items that were addressed for the sum of $86,596.18 are identified. So I'm seeking approval to make payment uh, number three to RCL as recommended by the engineer. Okay. Um, do you envision approximately how many payments? Uh, I would not even want to speculate okay. um, because it probably depends on schedule and um, weather and, and a lot of variables. Mm -hmm. Many more, I would guess, however. And for those of you watching the program or here in the room, uh, the, the, we're talking about improvement of our lagoon system that we attach to the you know, former base uh, wastewater project. And what we linked up with that about 2002 or three or something. Three, like correct. So, so that's where the improvements are. And RCL, I might mention, uh, is from the Midland area, Sanford to be exact, but that's the construction company that constructed the pier. Yes. Yep. So, not designed it, but put it together and, and uh, poured the three big caissons and filled them with rock, yada, yada. So, okay. Um, do we have a motion to go ahead with this payment? So. so uh, do we have support? Support. Okay. Ms. Grosko uh, and uh, support from uh, Mr. Gajewski. Roll call when ready. Ms. Grosko, yes. Mr. Pinkowski? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Fire? Yes. Motion carried. Item four, uh, restatements of uh, retirement plans. Yes, included in the packet were uh, restated retirement uh, plans that had been provided by Security Benefits, our retirement plan administrator, uh, to comply with IRS regulations. And these, these would involve the money purchase uh, defined contribution 401A plan that the majority of the employees participate in. That is the township's basic uh, retirement plan, um, separate from the one that the police uh, department uh, uh, participates in, in, in the, the MERS system. Uh, also included are uh, do updated documents for the optional 457 plan that sec Security Benefit provides. Um, these documents were referred to legal counsel. Uh, we have uh, an attorney at Miller Canfield that we've used for years that does uh, this type of work. And that attorney has talked to Security Benefits. I'm advised that there are some <coughs> modest changes uh, that probably should be put in place before the document is finalized and returned to the vendor uh, by month end as they had requested. So to accommodate that scenario, there's a resolution on the board table um, which the attorney prepared and I modified slightly which um, would authorize yours truly um, to execute the document and certainly that could be uh, myself or any one of the officers, supervisor, uh, clerk, um, etc. But any of that would authorize the selected party uh, to execute those documents and carry out uh, whatever actions are necessary to meet that deadline. So the way I would envision this working is we'd get the modified documents back from the attorney, sign them, and hopefully get them in by the end of January. Any discussion or questions regarding that? Uh the retirement plan issue. Anything at all? Okay. Um, then uh, I need a motion to uh, go ahead with this scenario uh, as explained. 
Are we doing that in a resolution? Yeah. Yes. My suggestion would be to adopt the resolution. Yes. Uh, now or when we get to resolutions and uh, matter of preference. Let's wait till we get to that okay. section because there's another one there. At the time, so. All right. <clears throat> Item five. Ensemble Township Sanitary Sewer Rate Adjustment. Yes. Uh, we have a, a contract with Ensemble Township that provides for treatment of sanitary sewer waste on a wholesale basis. Um, and there is one of the resolutions we're going to be talking about a little bit later uh, for sewer only customers makes reference to an adjustment made for Ensemble Township. And basically, the contract calls for us treating uh, Asable Township in a manner consistent with that uh, uh, in which we treat our own customers in terms of rate increase impact. And there is a methodology that we've utilized for many years to calculate that. I had, uh, back in November, done the calculation, provided it to Asable Township to give them a heads up as to what was coming, uh, recently reaffirmed it. Uh, but before it went into effect, I thought it appropriate to make the board aware of the calculation, make sure you are comfortable with that methodology, um, and also to seek acknowledgement that and approval that that rate will go into effect, and that would be seven dollars and ninety-two cents per thousand for a Sable Township. And uh, that that particular uh, percentage is the basis upon which our sewer-only customer adjustment is made, also. So once again, uh, what we're asking them to adopt or pay is the same as uh, Skoda Township people. Right. And uh, to repeat, you indicated that you had given them some previous warning. The first time was November? Er early November, I believe, yes. Okay, and then another uh, reminder closer to this time. Just recently, yes. Uh, I say that because some of you may know Osable had a kind of a few unhappy people uh, at one of their recent meetings, and uh, hopefully their price increases figured this in. You know, so okay. Um, I need a motion to uh, go ahead with the new rates for Osable Township. So moved. Support. Okay, Mr. Wheat, Mr. Byer. Anything further on this? Okay, roll call. Mr. Wheat? Yes. Mr. Bayeski? Yes. <clears throat> yep. Mr. Binkowski? Yes. Ms. Crasco, yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Informational item, um, an adjustment in our permit fees. Yes, I attached a memorandum from our zoning administrator regarding potential increases in fee permitting uh, costs relating to land use, uh, reoccupancy, and home occupation. Uh, Lorna had put together an estimate of the actual cost that she thought we would be incurring in processing the permits and some comparative uh, analysis of fees charged by other communities. And this is being provided for informational purposes this evening. If there was an interest in moving ahead and adjusting the fees, uh, a resolution would be prepared, or, or if there's additional information the board would like to see in considering this matter, uh, certainly staff would, would uh, endeavor to compile that. Okay. Do you guys have any questions regarding these fees? She has a she has a, a list of indicating land use, minor land use, building and business reoccupancy, home occupations, and indicated that since 1907, excuse me, 2007, uh, the permits have been uh, $15, and now they're vary between $20 and $35. Does that still put us on the low end of her comparable? It does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything at all? I think these fees are reasonable adjustments, but not anything higher than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this has been talked about for a long time. Even when I, a few months back when I was on the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. they were talking about it. I believe you know, we are on the low end. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I agree with Aaron. This would be the most I'd like to see it go up. I mean, it's not a 
department where we should be making money off of. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, not to put words in anybody's mouth, but do you think they're too high? Or? I think they're fair. Yeah. I like the idea that they've talked about before. If you don't get a permit and you get caught, it gets doubled. Okay, then. Uh, well, I guess we don't. We're going to go ahead with this. We don't need a vote on this. Uh, I, if there's an inclination to proceed, we will prepare a resolution to present to okay. enact the changes next time. Or yes, would that mess up the in the charging of permits? I mean, she's going to have to wait until February sometime. The busy time isn't until spring. So really, right. Okay. And in the, in the meantime, would you? Uh, Ask her if she could get the rates that our neighbor township is charging. Sure. Because she did give us a lot, but not Os Hobbles. So. Will do. Okay. So next time it's going to be a resolution. I think we should do that. Okay. So. All right. Uh, next we go to the community development coordinator, and uh, Ann has. Did I miss one? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yep. Capital Improvement Plan, a water system. Second information line. Yes. Thank you. Um, in uh, December of last year, there was material submitted to the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality relative to the Huron Shores Reliability Study. Uh, in conjunction with that, the capital improvement plans from the various municipalities were submitted. And we received correspondence indicating that a five-year plan would not be adequate. And frankly, I had known that and provided some rationale for our plan, but they wanted something more definitive. Um, and with significant assistance from our contract operator, uh, the uh, plan was extended, and this would be for the water system only, uh, with certain projects from five to 20 years. Those included several uh, projects out of the reliability study along with uh, meter replacement and some more standardized main replacement, standardized things you might expect. Um, that resulted in MDEQ approving the plan, but I wanted the board to be aware of it since we hadn't talked about it previously. Uh, it could obviously be modified if there was a desire to do that and resubmitted. Otherwise, uh, I would suggest no action is necessary. It also should be noted that a, a related requirement is to do an inventory of water main in each community. And we talked about it at the authority level, and the consensus appeared to be that the communities would do that independently. So we will need to be taking that up in the not too distant future. Okay. Um. In relation to this uh, water system business, uh, we talked a little bit today um, with all the headlines going on in Flint, Michigan regarding water, water quality. I wonder if we could have Catherine, you know, ask her if she could attend a meeting in February. The earlier the better. And Catherine is our key person for Fleece and Vandenbrink, which is the firm that handles our water and sewer. And have her just give a, a little report about how the quality of ours and uh, 2014 lead report. Okay. All right. So and we're looking that we this comes are, from where? That came from F and B. Okay. And it shows that we are uh, less than half the amount of lead content in our water okay. than the CDC, uh, CDC's maximum allowable. So we're doing pretty good on keeping lead levels down. Okay. But you would agree there are other things that could be of concern other than lead? Sure. Yeah. But according to the report, yeah. more than just that, there's uh, yeah. the, everything looks very good. Okay. And they do do random testing on a regular basis at yes. different locations throughout the town. So. Just uh, for the comfort level of the community, ask her if she'll show up. Okay. Please. Will do. Yeah. And for the comfort level of the supervisor, <laughs> also. 
All right. <clears throat> now, um, the uh, community uh, development uh, coordinator uh, has an informational item that involves, as I was trying to uh, rush along here a little bit, uh, the Van Anten Lake Special Assessment District. Uh, okay, thank you. As indicated at the January 11th board meeting, over the course of the next several meetings, we will follow the protocol set forth in Public Improvement Act 188 of 1954 to establish a new SAD for the weed control on Van Anten Lake. The first step in the process is to pass a resolution to set the first of two required public hearings. That resolution, entitled Resolution 2016-01, uh, is on the agenda this evening, and if, it, if adopted, will set the date of February 22nd, 2016 at 7 p.m. for the first public hearing. The purpose of the first public hearing is to determine if the improvement proposed is both reasonable and necessary. Okay. And you're suggesting the first public hearing is the 22nd of February, and I'm presuming the second one they both cover different aspects of this, right? Correct. The, yep, the second one is the purpose of the second hearing is to receive public comment regarding the proposed assessments that would be levied against the property. And public comment is available for anybody or just people that would be affected by this? Public. It's a public hearing. The notices are put in the paper and yep. then sent to the um, property owners, but anybody can make comment. We've had that in the past as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so February 22nd, 2016 at 7 o'clock, the first of two public hearings. That will be done if we pass the resolution later on this evening. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, speaking of resolutions, let's uh, move on to those. Um, now, um, okay. Um, and that is resolution number 2016-01, is that right? Yes. 01, very first resolution yes. of this calendar year. Okay, do you have any further comment regarding the topic of this resolution? Either one of you? Well, this just for clarification, this is the resolution that Ann just made reference to that mm -hmm. would establish the, the first public hearing to talk about whether the project is uh, necessary. <coughs> okay. Any questions or discussion? I'll move we adopt resolution 2016-1. Support. Okay. Motion by Mr. Pinkowski with support from Mr. Weed that we do adopt uh, resolution number 2016-01. Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yeah. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Pinkowski? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Fire? Yes. Okay, uh, next uh, we have a resolution um, regarding the new sewer only rates, um, customer rates that we discussed earlier. And uh, do we have a, do you have, first of all, do you have any further comment on this? I did, uh, I probably should clarify that. Going back to the, the special assessment district resolution, probably should note uh, that we are assuming an annual special assessment of $60,000 in, in approximate amount, not to exceed 70000 And the assessment process will be in arrears where the township expends the money and then um, we collect what's spent in the assessment district. So. Um, if there was any concern that we'd be collecting more than we need, that's not going to be the case. Um, the numbers are intended to provide some cushion for treatment purposes in a really, if there's a really bad treatment year. Okay. So, but if it turns out to be a good year, you can scale back on what you're. Correct. In in theory, we can collect forty thousand. Yeah. Okay. Questions on this? I'm looking for a motion. To make a motion, we go ahead with resolution 2016-02. Okay, I would support that. Uh, weed and buyer. Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Binkowski? Yes. Ms. Krasko, yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. 
Motion carried. We go to a third. Uh, um, okay. Should have, by rights, I guess, mentioned this when we were tweaking the agenda, right? Okay. This is resolution 2016 03, and this refers to. Uh, the retirement plan matters that we were talking about in the regular uh, narrative. Anything to add? I do not. Uh, it's pretty straightforward in terms of authorizing uh, myself to execute the documents once the attorney has approved them. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Need a motion. So moved. Support? Support. Okay. Moved by Ms. Carrasco and uh, supported by Mr. Binkowski that we do adopt resolution 2016 03 regarding the retirement plan amendments. Anything further? Roll call, please. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Binkowski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay, now we move on to other. Uh, and the uh, first item under other is uh, inland waters bathing beach sampling. I think uh, what last meeting we talked about Lake Huron sampling. This is inland lake foot pond, I'm guessing. So. Yes, okay. uh, specifically uh, Ratliff uh, Park on Van Etten Lake and Old Orchard Park uh, were sampled um, as the other inland component of the program and uh, the results uh, fell within the acceptable standards for bacteria levels. Okay. All right. <clears throat> if if they did this testing in the summer, sometime I don't care, you know, August, June, and we're now just getting this information in at the end of January. What if they found something really nasty? Uh, would they hurry up the process? I, I presume they would. We can ask that question, but I yes. Yeah. Makes you think that. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure they would because yes. they want to shut the beach right. down, yeah. so nobody was. Yeah, I'm assuming they would, but. So I since it's okay, to... it's no big hurry. To... But again, we have the cleanest beaches around. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what can I say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we move on from that to the uh, Board of Review schedule. Um, we, uh, I might point out that we have a new Board of Review uh, member that the Board appointed uh, a month or two ago, Mr. Peter Maxwell. Uh, he succeeds the uh, seat of uh, Mr. Charles Steffes, who moved to the other side of the state. So, uh, uh, well. This is a communication from our assessor, uh, essentially requesting that the uh, Saturday session of the Board of Review uh, be reduced to uh, morning only. Uh, Nancy indicated that uh, for many years we've, we've been open uh, for customers, if you will, the entire uh, day of Saturday. There's been very, very limited participation in general and in particular in the afternoon. So. Uh, in the interest of efficiency uh, and uh, not imposing too much on the folks who are uh, spending their time doing this, uh, it's being suggested that uh, we limit it to just the mornings. Okay. Um, and you are satisfied that this meets <coughs> the state standards for meetings of border review? Yes. I also spoke to Nancy about that. Okay. They're, they're, this is not the one where they have that kind of requirement like the other ones. So okay. Said, so. All right. All right. Now, number three, where are we at with number three, waste management contract agreement? Do not have a contract to present this evening. Hopefully okay. I'll have that at the next meeting. All right. Well, then we're at public comment, the second public comment. No cards needed. Uh, four minutes to speak. Is there anyone that wishes to share anything, uh, concerns I have, or questions, please? Yeah, just, uh, I guess I'll do this. 
uh, in regards to inland water quality, Van Etten Lake Association, we do test that water all through the summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, every every month we or every week we test clarity. Uh, uh, we te check temperatures, and then every month uh, Dan Stock, who does our testing, does a, a, a check for uh, solids and and all the you know bacteria and that type of thing so and then we send those to a, a lab and have them confirm that they're all within the range so Van Etten Lake does monitor during the summer too mm -hmm. and he and Dan goes to different uh, areas of the lake <sighs> yeah he, we primarily we have a, a, a specific point where we try to keep a, a you know for our clarity and for our uh, water temperatures we go to the exact same spot yeah. but Dan goes to several places throughout the lake and in the river system too mm -hmm. to verify that so so we we try to keep that and if anything comes up for us then we bring that forward so okay. just just to let you know if for the sake of our tv audience uh why don't, why don't you throw your name in your my name is doug jagger and you are the i am on the board for van and lake association and also i uh, kind of watch the we control system okay too, so all right thank you Doug. Okay. all right all right <clears throat> is there anyone else anyone else okay seeing none i will move on to uh board comments is there anything from the board me go ahead just a reminder again to everybody that uh, elections coming up absentee ballots are in we're getting them marked so we can test them as soon as we get them tested absentee ballots will be starting to be mailed so if you want an absentee ballot give us a call we'll send you the application that way when when they come in we don't have to fool around with that we just mail them right to you so give us a call we'll mail them out to you That's it. And as per the state legislature's action in the recent month or so, uh, I do have plans or instructions about the new rules on uh, voting straight ticket. There, there is no straight ticket that won't come into effect until the November election. Okay. That just means you can't circle, fill in the circle that says Republican Party and not go, you have to pick and choose. So it's going to be, you have to do a little more homework on this one. Instead of just filling in one over, right. you'll have to fill in whoever you want so okay. but yeah not okay. gonna be that too much difficult just might take you a little bit longer that's what's good about an absentee ballot you can sit at home and take your time doing it mm -hmm. so remember that absentee ballots all right <coughs> thank you Chris you're welcome okay the next item we've got a rather short meeting tonight uh, we have a closed session uh, coming up regarding uh, privileged attorney client communications and uh, latest uh, information regarding uh, collective bargaining strategy. Uh, so we need a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Support. Okay, motion by Mr. Weed and supported by Mr. Binkowski. I believe, that we do go into closed session. And uh, roll call, please. Mr. Weed. Yes. Ms. Prasco, yes. Mr. Pinkowski? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. We are in closed section.
in the valley of the mighty river, sit to tie.